Welcome back to Frindle part four. When we last left off, Nick had given his oral presentation and it didn't go quite as he planned, but it was pretty good. He wasted almost over half the class period and she only had a little bit of time at the end, but she still got in all the learning they needed to do and assigned homework for the day. So he felt a little bit defeated at the end. So let's see what he comes up with next. Chapter six, the big idea. Three things happened later that same afternoon. Nick and Janet Fisk had missed the bus because the, of the school newspaper meeting. So they could, they walked home together. They were seeing who could walk along the curb without falling. It took a lot of concentration. And when Janet stepped off into the street, Nick said, that's three points for me. But Janet said, I didn't fall. I saw something. Look. She bent down and picked up a gold ballpoint pen, the fancy kind. That was the first thing, Janet finding the pen. Then they got back on the curb and Nick followed Janet, putting one foot carefully in front of the other on the narrow concrete curb. And while he stepped along, he thought back over the school day, especially about his report and what Miss Granger had said about words at the end of the period finally sank in. The second thing, understanding what Miss Granger had said. She said, who says dog means dog? You do, Nicholas. You do, Nicholas. He repeated to himself, I do? Nick thought, still putting one foot in front of the other, following Janet. What does that mean? And then he remembered something. When he was about two years old, his mom had bought him one of those unbreakable cassette players and a bunch of sing-along tapes. He had loved them and he played them over and over and over and over. He would carry the tape and the player to his mother or his big brother or his father and bang them together and say, Wagala, 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 until someone put the cassette in the machine and turned it on. And for three years, whenever he said Wagala, his family knew that he wanted to hear the pretty sounds with voices and instruments. Then, when Nick went to preschool, he learned that if he wanted his teacher and the other kids to understand him, he had to use the word music. But Gugala meant the nice sound to Nick because Nick said so. Who says Gugala means music? You do, Nicholas. Not fair, yelled Janet. They were at the corner of their own street and Nick had bumped into her, completely absorbed in his own thoughts. Janet stumbled off the curb and the gold pen in her hand clattered onto the street. Sorry, I didn't mean to, honest, said Nick. I just wasn't watching here. Nick stepped over and picked up the pen and held it out to her. Here's your... And that's when the third thing happened. Nick didn't say pen. Instead, he said, here's your frindle. Frindle? Janet took her pen and looked at him like he was nuts. She wrinkled her nose and said, what's a frindle? Nick grinned and said, you'll find out. See you later. Mm, I think Nick is having some sort of big idea. It was there on the corner of Spring Street and South Grand Avenue, one block from home on a September afternoon. That's when Nick got the big idea. Here is Nick showing the pen to Janet. And by the time he had run down the street and up the steps and through the door upstairs to his room, 
It wasn't just a big idea. It was a plan. A whole plan, just begging for Nick to put it into action. And action was Nick's middle name. The next day after school, the plan began. Nick walked into the Penny Pace Pantry store and asked the lady behind the counter for a friendle. She squinted at him. A what? A friendle, please. A black one. And Nick smiled at her. She leaned over closer and aimed one ear at him. You want a what? A friendle. And this time Nick pointed at the ballpoint pens behind her on the shelf. A black one, please. The lady handed Nick the pen. He handed her 49 cents and said, thank you, and left the store. Six days later, Janet stood at the counter at the penny pantry. Same store, same lady. John had come in the day before, and Pete the day before that, and Chris the day before that, and Dave the day before that. Janet was the fifth kid that Nick had sent there to ask the woman for a friendle. Hmm. Why would he send so many people? I think they're trying to train her, like the way you would train a dog with a new trick. And when she asked, the lady reached right for the pens and said, black or blue? Nick was standing one aisle away in, at the candy racks and he was grinning. Frindle was a real word. It meant pen. Who says Frindle means pen? You do, Nicholas. Half an hour later, a group of serious fifth graders had a meeting in Nick's playroom. It was John, Pete, Dave, Chris, and Janet. Add Nick, that's six kids. Six secret agents. They held up their right hands and read the oath I'll switch to my right hand. Rip had written out loud. I read the oath Nick had written out loud. From this day on and forever, I will never use the word pen again. Instead, I will only use the word frindle. And I will do everything possible so others will too. And all six of them signed an oath with Nick's frindle. The plan would work. Thanks, Mrs. Granger. So he's really taking her words to heart and kind of twisting what she was trying to get the point to be across. Chapter 7, Word Wars. School was the perfect place to launch a new word. Since this was a major historical event, Nick wanted it to begin exactly the right class, 7th period, language arts. Nick raised his hand the first thing after the bell rang and said, Miss Granger, I forgot my frindle. Sitting three rows away, Johnny blurted, or sorry, John blurted out, I have an extra one you can borrow, Nick. Then John made a big show of looking for something in his backpack. I think I have an extra frindle. I mean, I told my mom to get me three or four. I'm sure I had an extra frindle in here yesterday, but I must have taken it. Wait. Oh, yeah, here it is. And then John made a big show of throwing it over to Nick, and Nick missed it on purpose. Then he made a big show of finding it. Mrs. Granger and every kid in the class got the message loud and clear. That black plastic thing that Nick borrowed from John had a funny name, a different name, a new name, Frindle. There was a lot of giggling, but Mrs. Granger turned the power in her eyes and swept the room into silence, and the rest of the class went by according to plan, her plan. As everyone was leaving after class, Miss Granger said, Nicholas, I'd like to have a word with you. She emphasized the word word. Let me read that again then. Nicholas, I'd like to have a word with you. Nick's mouth felt dry 
and he gulped, but his mind stayed clear. He walked up to her desk. Yes, Mrs. Granger? It's a funny idea, Nicholas, but I will not have my class disrupt this again. Is that clear? Ah, so it seems like she knows exactly what he is doing. Her eyes were lit up, but mostly light. Not much heat. Idea? What idea? asked Nick. As and he tried to make his eyes as blank as possible. You know what I mean, Nicholas. I am talking about the performance that you and John gave at the start of class. I am talking about this. And she held up her pen, an old maroon fountain pen with a blue cap. But I really didn't have a friendle with me. He's doing it again right in front of her. He is bold. But I really didn't have a friendle with me, said Nick amazed at his own bravery. And hiding behind his glasses, Nick kept his eyes wide and blank. Mrs. Granger's eyes flashed and then narrowed and her lips formed a thin, hard line. Ooh, I like how the author doesn't say that she's mad, but all the descriptions of her face definitely say she is not happy. She was quiet for a few seconds and then she said, I see. Very well. Then I, we, then I guess we have nothing more to discuss today, Nicholas. You may go. Thanks, Mrs. Granger, said Nick, and he grabbed his backpack and headed for the door. And when he was just stepping into the hallway, he said, and I promise I won't ever forget my friddle again. Bye. Still very bold. Just keeps doing what he knows she doesn't want him to do. Chapter 8. Mightier than the sword. There's a saying, kind of an idiom, is the pen is mightier than the sword. It's not that it's really stronger, it's that the words behind the pen are stronger than the fighting. Two days later, the photographer came to class. Sorry, the photographer came to take class pictures. And the fifth grade picture would be taken last, right after lunch. That gave Nick and his secret agents plenty of time, and they whispered something into the ear of every fifth grader. All the individual pictures had been taken, and finally it was time for the group picture. Everyone was lined up in the auditorium stage. Everyone's hair looked great. Everyone was smiling. Mm, I feel like troubles are coming. But when the photographer said, say cheese, no one did. Instead, every kid said, Frindle! And they held up one for the camera to see. The photographer was out of film. So the, that shot was the only fifth grade group picture he took. Six of the fifth grade teachers were not pleased. And Mrs. Granger was furious. No one had really wanted to make the teachers mad. It was just fun. It also got all the kids in the school talking about the new word. And when people pick up a new word, they say it all the time. The kids at Lincoln Elementary School liked Nick's new word a lot. But not Miss Granger. The day after the class picture, she made an announcement to each of her classes. She posted a notice on the main bulletin board by the office. Anyone who has heard using the word frindle instead of the word pen will stay after school and write this sentence 100 times. I am writing this punishment with a pen. Mrs. Granger. But that just made everyone want to use Nick's new word even more. Staying after school with the lone Granger became a badge of honor. There were kids in her classroom every day after school. It went on like that for a couple of weeks. One day, near the end of seventh period, Mrs. Granger asked Nick to come talk to her after school. This is not detention, Nicholas. I just want to talk. Nick was excited. It was kind of like conference during a war. 
So they're comparing a war to what Mrs. Granger and Nick have going on. So a little bit of a simile there. Because it has that word like. One side waves a white flag and the generals come out and talk. General Nicholas Allen. Nick liked the sound of that. He stuck his head in Miss Granger's doorway after school. You wanted to talk with me? Yes, Nicholas. Please come in and sit down. When he was settled, she looked at him and said, Don't you think this Frindle business has gone far enough? It's just a disruption to the school, don't you think? Nick swallowed hard, but he said, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just fun. And it really is a real word. Not a bad word, just different. And besides, it's how words really change, isn't it? That's what you said. Miss Granger sighed. It is how a word could be made up brand new, I suppose. But the word pen? Should it really be replaced by, by that other word? She didn't even want to say the word frindle. The word pen has a long, rich history. It comes from the Latin word for feather, piña. Pina, sorry. It started to become our word for pen because quills were made from feathers, where were some of the first writing tools ever made. It is a word that comes from somewhere. It makes sense, Nicholas. But Frindle makes just as much sense to me, said Nick. And after all, didn't somebody just make up the word Pina too? That got sparks from Mrs. Granger's eyes. But all she said was, then you're not going to stop this? And Nick, looked her right in her eyes and said, well, me and, I mean, a bunch of kids from, a bunch of my friends and I took an oath about using the word and we have to keep our promise. And besides, I don't think there's really anything wrong with it. I like my word. Nick tried to look brave like a general, good general should. Very well then, I thought it would end up this way. Miss Granger pulled out, pulled out a fat white envelope from her desk drawer and held it up. This is a letter I've written to you, Nicholas. Nick held out his hand, thinking she was going to give it to him, but she didn't. I'm not going to send it to you until all of this is over. I want you to sign your name and put today's date across the back of the envelope. When you read it, whenever that may be, you will know that this is the same letter and that I have not made any changes to it. Here's a picture of Mrs. Granger showing the letter to Nicholas. This is weird, Nick said to himself, but to Mrs. Granger, he said, sure and he signed his name in his best cursive and put the date under it. Then Mrs. Granger stood up abruptly and said, then that is all for today, Nicholas, and may the best word win. There was a frown on her face, but her eyes, her eyes were different, almost happy. And Nick was halfway down the hall before it hit him. She likes this war. And she wants to win real bad. Walking to school the next day, Pete had a great idea. How about we see if we can get every kid in the whole fifth grade to go up to Mrs. Granger and say, can I borrow a frindle? You mean Mrs. Granger, may I borrow a frindle? Said Dave. Gotta use correct grammar. Don't want to upset dangerous Grangerous. A new nickname. Sounds good to me, said Nick. She can't keep everyone after school, can she? Mm, I'm not so sure this is going to end up the way they want. With every kid going up to her. Is she able to back down? Almost
almost 80 kids stayed after school with Mrs. Granger that day. Sounds like she can keep them. They filled her room and spilled out into the hallway. The principal had to stay late to help. And they had to arrange two special late buses to get all the kids home. The next day, all the fifth graders did it again. And so did a lot of the other students. Over 200 kids. Parents called to complain. The school bus drivers threatened to go on strike. And then the school board and the superintendent got involved. The superintendent is like the principal's boss's boss. And about this time, the principal of Lincoln Elementary School paid a little visit to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Allen. She wanted to talk to them about their son, the one in fifth grade, the one named Nick. So in the description box below, you will find a um, link to the quiz that I would like you to take. And so once you've done with this video, please take the quiz and I will see you next time.